scummy look, crummy look, fake. I can't escape the dull heartache, knowing that my weather's been taken from me. Asking myself, how can it be? Good afternoon to all of our listeners out there. This is Kate Magdalena Willens broadcasting to you on American Freedom Radio. And I've got two wonderful guests tonight. But as this is really the very first show that we're doing here on the Blue Sky Report, I just wanted to say a little bit about the report and what my hopes are. Um, I was given this opportunity by Danny Romero to bring a show that he wanted to bring on about geoengineering. And truly, there, the, to me, it's, it's probably the most important topic in the whole world right now, that and Fukushima. But there's not a whole lot we can do about what's coming to us across the Pacific now. So the hope is that we really can do something about what's going on in the sky. And so this, this report, the Blue Sky Report, which is just coming into being right now, is really in the service of this whole movement. And I'm inviting a lot of our activists onto the show. I would like to have reports from different places around the globe and certainly around the country. And later on in the show, I'll be giving out an email address. If you want to be on the show, if you have information that you think needs to get out there, then please email me. I'll just give it now and I'll give it again to Kate at AmericanFreedomRadio.com. And then we can talk about it. Um, I'd also like to give a, a warm thank you to my mentor, colleague, and friend, Mitch Santel, who made it possible for me to meet Danny and to be on the show. So thank you, Danny. Thank you, Mitch. And now I'd like to introduce my guests. Um, well, we've got Michael Murphy tonight, and we've got Patrick Roddy. And many of you activists know who they are, but I'll give a little bit of a background. So Michael Murphy, of course, uh, doesn't need a whole lot of introduction. If you know anything about geoengineering, you probably learned from the beginning uh, from his film, What in the World Are They Spraying?, followed up by Why in the World Are They Spraying? Michael's at work on a new film now, uh, heavily into production of it, called An Unconventional Shade of Grey. And he's going to be speaking about a little bit more. We, 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 I spoke with Michael two weeks ago during our marathon, and I invited him back because he and Patrick have just returned from the Istanbul Security Conference over there in Turkey. And I felt that it was a very good time to bring them on and hear from them how that conference went. Um, but before we get into those questions, I also wanted to speak about Patrick Roddy. Um, I've known Patrick for about four years. I first met him outside City Hall in San Francisco, where he was coordinating, demonst- you know, pa- uh, pa- peaceful demonstrations against geoengineering. And he's been heading up uh, efforts in San Francisco over the past four years. He also gives beautiful, air I don't know how beautiful they are, but he gives pretty spectacular aerial photographs of the skies over San Francisco. And now he has, um, he has increased his, his um, breadth and he's giving photographs from skies all over the world. Uh, he's, he's, given some spectacular testimonies at the EPA hearing. He went to Paris in August. His, his, um, his leadership in this, in this field where we are really rallying against geoengineering is, is fantastic. And so I'm just thrilled to invite both Michael and Patrick onto the show. Um, I, I thought maybe Michael, we could hear from you first. Uh, but Patrick, please feel free to chime in just as the spirit moves you. Um, really, I want to I want to understand um, why you both felt it was so important to go to this conference in Istanbul and what your goal was in going, particularly in light of the Paris climate talks being around the same time or just following it. So, so Michael, why don't you start? And then, Patrick, I'd love to hear from you on that as well. Yeah, well, thank you, Kate. And thank you for uh, for having us both on. Uh, that's kind of a complicated question, and I'll tell you why. Uh, we're in the middle of production for an unconventional shade of gray, and uh, activist Michael Fleming, who I met and actually interviewed for the first film, What in the World 
of a spray and he asked me if I was going to Turkey, which I thought was a very unusual question. <laughs> and of course I responded, well, I have no plans. Why would you ask? And, and he stated, well, I gave an organizer to an event your email and you may have been invited. And I looked back in my emails after the conversation and realized I had an email and it was an invitation to go to a uh, United Nations security conference. And uh, obviously, we're, we're very conscious in terms of what we spend money on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I asked, will uh, airfare and hotel be covered? He responded back uh, for me, uh, yes. So I instantly felt it would be a very good opportunity to get some footage uh, in an unconventional shade of gray at mm-hmm. an official conference where we're bringing these issues up. When mm-hmm. I was invited, I quickly thought of Patrick. So I said, Patrick, you know, I think this is an opportunity uh, for you to go. I'll uh, so we shared the, the conference uh, email address with him. Uh, they weren't able to cover Patrick's uh, airfare there. However, they did bring him in as a speaker, so I was very pleased mm-hmm. uh, with that. But some of my goals, at least getting away from the film, are to really develop allies right now. And a lot of people look at these meetings as United Nations, and, and that's the enemy, and they have different objectives. And largely, that's true. However... Uh, I think what instead of pushing these people away, uh, which there's definitely a time for, and criticism, which, again, there's definitely a time for, I think we do better when we look for allies, when we mm-hmm. look to meet people and really get an opportunity to, to insert uh, the issue of geoengineering into causes and sit down, not mm-hmm. in terms of you are the enemy, but mm-hmm. let's see if we have a commonality and if there's any way to move <coughs> forward. I think we accomplished that because we did meet a whole bunch – of people, some who we're very surprised to find out were very supportive of our efforts. But it was incredible, Kate, because for the first time, you know, we're used to going into the the climate meetings and essentially getting kicked out or, you know, getting pushed into the corner. This was the first time that we went to an official uh, meeting uh, set up. It wasn't actually set up by the U.N. It was set up by uh, uh, NGO from Turkey. It was the first time where we actually had the opportunity to present Mm -hmm. Um, to present our cause. So it was a really wonderful idea. Much to our surprise, a lot of the audience, a lot of who were filled with diplomats, uh, public officials, even United Nations representatives, and people who were supportive uh, and essentially selling geoengineering out to the audience. Uh, I thought it was was incredible that for the first time to be able to present our case, and it proved effective because as a result, I think Patrick, uh, Michael, and myself, we were able to meet uh, some people who are interested in the cause and I think develop allies, but again, get, getting this issue out into the open. Um, before I go too far, and Patrick might have some greater insight to this, you know, we're scratching our heads in terms of why we would be invited into uh, a meeting essentially that was promoting United Nations uh, mm-hmm. agendas. So, uh, right. so there might have been some geopolitical uh, aspects, but Patrick might be able to have um, some greater insight uh, on that, Pat, Patrick, or Kate, did you want uh, Patrick? Well, the only to- thing I, I would love to hear from Patrick, I just, and maybe Patrick knows this, um, the framework of the whole conference, was it primarily Turkey? Was it anybody outside of Turkey, or was it just within that country? It was, uh, it was filled with people from around the world, um, but it seemed like Middle Eastern was more uh, of the attendance, and certainly uh, myself, Patrick, and Michael Fleming, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that we were the only people um, who were actually out of the United States. Um, okay. So it, it and, was, and was the focus of the conference geoengineering, or was it security at large and geoengineering being one segment of that? Yes, correct. It was, okay. it was security in large, but it looked at the, uh, which we were very surprised, it looked at the uh, exactly what we're talking about, the uh, climate engineering, its risks um, and mm-hmm. benefits, so mm-hmm. it can have certain corporate benefits, but mm-hmm. really what the risks were, how it interrelates to HARP, is it being used now? All of these issues that we have been trying to get into the mainstream and trying to insert uh, largely through the audience, now finally we had a stage. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was very pleased with the way that this went and Patrick's in Michael's presentations, and it was very interesting because they asked me to be the moderator uh, of this event. And, of course, as a moderator, I was very, um, and after researching geoengineering, recognizing the human health ecological implications, um, I I 
tried to take a neutral and a very respective role in this. But what was incredible, Patrick was the first presentation, and he did such an effective job in terms of painting the, the, uh, the ecological and other implications with this. You know, well, it turned out a little bit further down the line, I think we had five or six speakers. By the time they, they got up and tried to sell geoengineering, Patrick yeah. and Michael, and we had just sold the, the entire audience. Yeah. So they, were, they were kind of, well, you know, we're going to try and show you some good points. They were completely uh, at, at a, uh, I guess, a disadvantage, for lack of a better word. So it was, it was actually kind of, kind of funny. For the first time, we had the upper hand in, in uh, these types of dialogues. Great. Great. So, Patrick, welcome to the show. And um, please tell us what you hoped to bring, what you did bring. I did watch your um, your presentation. But if you'd like to speak about what you said and how you thought it went, anything, please feel free now. Well, first of all, thanks for, for thanks for inviting me onto the show and uh, congratulations on the new show. Um, I didn't really have much time to plan what was going to happen. Cause I, I wasn't even sure it was going to happen because um, the powers that be present a united front on a lot of things, including we're all going to die from climate change, um, smart meters are awesome, everyone should take their vaccines, so on and so on and so on. Right. And NGOs are all tied in with the United Nations. And this was an NGO. Could you, could you just thing. tell us, what, what is an NGO for people like myself that are kind of unclear about that? So uh, NGO stands for non-governmental organization. So it is, um, it's an unelected appointed group, which is, they also call it, a, a sort of, it's like a public-private partnership. And uh, these are self-appointed groups, like, you know, the, like um like, like San Francisco Bicycle Coalition is an NGO. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, all kind, there's thousands of them, mm -hmm. and they all sing from the same song sheet towards sustainability and smart and all this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, when I – I mean, uh, Michael told me about this, um, like, the Monday before it happened. Like, you know, it was – we were going there on – like, it started on Thursday. I hear about it on Monday, <laughs> and I yeah. go – and I, and I look at it and I think, are they really talking about this stuff? And I look mm -hmm. and, I, and in the thing, it's saying they're talking about current implementation. They talk about heart. Wow. They wow. talk about health effects. And I, in fact, wow. it, was, it was tailor made for me because the thing I presented at the, well, the thing I brought to the Paris Climate Conference, it was called Human Health Impacts of Proposed Geoengineering Solutions. I mean, the, you can imagine the air quotes are in proposed there, of course. Mm -hmm. And it's what I brought, what I brought to the EPA. And here it was like, wow. And then, then I called, then I called them up and they said, yeah, yeah, sure, you can come. Um, I thought, well, how am I going to get there? So I, I did a GoFundMe and it was funded within a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, mm -hmm. wow. Uh, so, so I go there, not sure what to expect if it was a big, bait and switch and they're going, ha ha, suckers, we brought you all the way over here and here, here's a black hood, get into this van. Wow, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't know, no, that, I, I didn't think that was going to happen, but, um, so, we went, uh, vini vidi vici. Exactly. Like, wow, holy yeah. crap, that really happened. Yeah. And, um, the thing that's been getting the most press from it is, um, so in the, in the main hall, I was looking around at the front, at the, the, the front couple of rows had like little pieces of paper of who, who all these people who were going to be there. You know, there were, um, sort of real New World Order -y kind of people, like sort of brigadier generals from Qatar, the chief of police of Turkey, um, et cetera, et cetera, plus Her Royal Highness, uh, Prince, Princess Basma bin Saud, who's the, uh, granddaughter of the founder of Saudi Arabia, wow. uh, daughter of King Saud. And uh, so when we went to the, when we had our, um, our session, um, there she was. She was in the front row. <laughs> I'm like, wow, we got the princess sewed up. And, you know, Michael went first and he was, you know, uh, you know, talking about, yeah, hey, this is going on. This, this is why it's bad. And she was asking intelligent questions, like, wow, she knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. 
So um, the next day after, you know, I said, okay, you know, if I could, you know, have a quick interview with you. And she was very candid about, yes, it's going on. Because it turns out she, she's on one of her, uh, on, on Twitter, one of her followers sent, sent her, what in the world are they spraying a year ago? Yes. She saw it and went, whoa. She was. She described it as a weapon of mass destruction. Mm-hmm. She was criticizing uh, transhumanism. Mm-hmm. I mean, she didn't use the word transhumanism, but it was like what, it was a, the whole thing was gold, and it got she, and it's got like I don't know how many thousands of shares. I know, now. I know. I think she said something about you know implying that there was really a program to reduce oh, the no, population. No, she, said, she, she said it. She oh yeah, she said it was a depopulation program. Yeah. And. Bear in mind, English is her second language. Right. But she was saying, you know, there's this very powerful group who mm-hmm. are doing this, mm-hmm. and we should pay attention to who they are. Right. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> and I've seen, like, if you, if, you look, if you look at her up on Google Images and whatever, you'll see different, I mean, you'll see her with different places. Like, there's one, one photograph of her. She's at Chatham House. And Chatham House, for those who don't know, is... Scumbag Central. That is the uh, that that's where the Royal Institute of International Affairs uh, is based, and that's the, uh, the the sister or maybe parent organization of the CFR, which is one of these roundtable groups that mm-hmm. basically runs the joint. So mm-hmm. she's rubbing shoulders with these characters, mm-hmm. but she was very very outspoken, and she was she also had this um, a keynote speech, which uh, I'll eventually put up on my my, my channel. And she was r- roundly criticizing the United Nations, saying it's only, it's only helping the elite and just leaving everyone else mm-hmm, mm-hmm. up in the dust. So it was... How wonderful. Wow. You know, it's just, Brave woman. Yeah. No, I thought she was very well spoken. Um, by the way, Patrick, if, if a person wants to watch that, can they just go to your YouTube under yeah, Patrick my, Roddy? My, my name is Patrick Roddy, R-O-D-D-I-E. So if you go to YouTube.com slash Patrick Roddy or Facebook.com slash Patrick Roddy, you'll find me. Plus, okay. you know. Great. No, but the thing is, um, you never really know, I think, with our elected officials and with these officials from international, from countries that are not necessarily allies of the U.S., or in the case of Saudi Arabia and Turkey, ostensibly they are allies of the U.S., but, you know, you just don't know how much people know and what their allegiances are. And, you know, as you look at the, the global, you know, the global turf of this program, you know, it being in Russia, it being in Thailand, it being everywhere. Mm-hmm. I, I would certainly love to hear any either of your theories well, on on how what is the political maneuvering that that takes place for this to be so widespread. But I just want to say what, put one little thing in, and that is that I do believe that I think that this is a military program as well. And that what they're doing, you know, does involve some kind of a Star Wars military aspect. And which is why I think that everybody feels they need to be in on the game, you know. But go ahead, please. I I just uh, interviewed Dean Lana Freeland for uh, my next film, uh, Unconventional Grey. Go to unconventionalgrey.com for more information. We just released a trailer. But, yes, it's intimately related geoengineering programs with HARP and other technologies. And what she really stressed to me, and we're all, there's so much to learn that it's not only HARP. HARP essentially is, is outdated. Now they're using other technologies, but essentially what they're used for is ionospheric heating. And the aerosols that we see dispersed in our skies on a regular basis are essential to bring these types of systems, the weather manipulation and other things, into fruition. So we have this heating, let's say right now, looking off of the California coast. For the past two, two and a half years, we've had a ridge of high pressure. And what it's doing is diverting the jet stream. When the jet stream hits that bubble, that big hot bubble, it diverts up north. So it's taking all of the precipitation, all of the warm weather up into the Arctic region where they're having record temperatures, ice melting, all sorts of problems. What happens with that when all the warm weather goes up, like any stream, it wants to correct itself. So it's dumping all of that moisture, all of that cold weather that it got a hold of when it was up in the Arctic into the Midwest, into the East Coast, where they've typically 
for the past couple of years. I think we're seeing a change now, but they've had uh, very cold temperatures, a lot of precipitation. So we're seeing these types of manipulations related to Agenda 21 objectives, water rights, water shortages, all of these consolidations of power. But it's very effective for these programs to be initiated. And that gets into the political leverage. So right now, when you go back to geoengineers talking about their programs, they say there will be winners and losers. And because geoengineering, even stratospheric aerosol geoengineering, if they didn't intend on diverting the weather, uh, according to geoengineer David Keith, uh, geoengineering will create droughts in certain areas, floods in other areas. Mm -hmm. So they express their intent, and we covered this and why in the world are they spraying, I believe, to literally control the weather. Now, they were talking about what regions are going to get the water, what regions will be Im impacted by drought. So there's a, a worldwide uh, interest in this issue of geoengineering. So there are a lot of geopolitical uh, interests with this, but I think we're at a monumental uh, time in terms of geoengineering activism, because we have what what many are calling the Hegelian dialectic, the problem, reaction, solution. And what we're looking at in unconventional gray is the fact that climate models are missing the real big cause of climate change, and that's geoengineering. That's not even argued by geoengineers. And because geoengineering changes our uh, the temperature of our planet, they're designed to do that, and because they're designed to manipulate our weather. Because they're not included in climate models, uh, it literally makes all of these models fraudulent and flawed. And now I think we see other regions interested in this issue because we have this climate change, COP21, that just created a legally binding agreement based on flawed models. And what this means, it means a complete transformation of government and uh, uh, corporations and industry from the world. So it's a big shift of power uh, in independence and freedom, uh, where global power, certain regions in, in, on our planet held a certain level of power, and now it's being consolidated. So certain regions, certain countries, certain industries will benefit, but certain regions will not. And I think the interest in geoengineering is you have to realize when you talk about climate change, geoengineering is the lost key. It's the unspoken about key. It's the key and the cause of, of climate change. And because now we're moving into proving with our aerosol collection projects that geoengineering is occurring, we can bring this into courts of law around the world and get a court injunction to stop the climate change legislation. And this is critical, and I'll tell you why. It's critical because right now, COP21, it's a legally binding agreement. And legally binding, what does that mean? Well, it means that we will be bound to a certain authority, and they will have legal authority to implement taxes, um, to implement uh, restrictions, fines, all of these things possible in imprisonment. So it's essentially a new government that has been formed. And because these shifts of power are occurring, and when we look at why it's important to bring geoengineering into the equation, this is a new government, and it's a carbon dictatorship. And they created the framework to legalize geoengineering without our input or without the input of our legislators. And I want to backtrack. Some critics are saying, well, they're not even talking about legalizing geoengineering at these meetings, and that is true. And the reason is this, because right now they're denying that the programs are ongoing. But without question, what it does, it circumvents state law, national law, and constitutions around the world, so it creates a new government that doesn't have to represent anybody. And because of that, that is how they create the framework to legalize geoengineering without our input or without the input of our legislators. And it's very important to recognize there's a five-year planned implementation date on this. So they're looking at five years before getting this structure in place. Today, we can take both legal and legislative action, getting these court injunctions to stop the climate change agenda. If we miss this, if we don't take advantage of this, they will legalize these programs, removing our ability to take legal and legislative action. And this project that we're doing, it's not a divisive project, but it's a unity project. Mm -hmm. And the way that we're going into it, I just got off the phone with my legal team this morning. We are going to get court injunctions halting this uh, this structure or these climate change mandates, talks, and all of these things until our skies are free from aerosols that are related to geoengineering programs. So not only does it 
uh, give a strong incentive uh, to stop geoengineering programs, but even people who are in support of the climate change agenda, this huge transfer of power, it gives them the opportunity to support us in our efforts in stopping geoengineering. And that's the only way we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. We need to unify with those who are today, perhaps on the other side of the issue. We need to give them incentives to support us. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're moving forward. And, mm -hmm. and Kate, it's, it's been, uh, it's incredible because we're starting to see some interest in our model right now, both legal, legislatively. There are a lot of people listening and, mm -hmm. and uh, supporting our efforts right now. So that's why I felt it was so important to bring you on, because I had also a sense that this was all happening from what I was reading. But what I'd like I'd like to I'd like to know um, how weak how the activists in this movement can support your work right now, and that goes for both Patrick and Michael, what would you like to tell us out here to most effectively support you? Because I do believe, as you say, we are at a pivotal point right now. And the synchronicity between the Turkey conference and the Paris conference and the fact that there's a five-year window before it really takes, you know, before it gets its, its skeleton to begin what you say, this global governance, I read, by the way, in the New York Times, something like, oh, well, you know, each country is kind of going to be kind of on their own to facilitate this. It didn't seem that they were pushing the idea of a cohesive central structure. But you obviously, there's a lot, of course, in the New York Times that is misrepresenting what's really going on. So, Kate, the, the last thing they want us to do is unify and stop this. Yeah. They want us to think everything's okay. We've even had elements from within the geoengineering movement saying, don't worry, it's not a binding agreement. Oh, they're not going to legalize geoengineering. You better believe it's a binding agreement. You better believe it creates the framework Absolutely. to legalize geoengineering. This is our so, future. And if anybody okay, would so take what? our freedom <laughs> so lightly, then they are un-American. They are anti-humanity. This is the most important thing. And, again, our battle right now mm -hmm. is on the legal and legislative front. And this is their agenda. Patrick and I and Max Bliss and the other activists in Paris went there and we heard what the agenda is. And we have to take this serious. So whatever happens today, don't think that they're not going to follow through with the agenda. The agenda is global governance. Mm -hmm. That re means loss of rights, loss of freedoms. That means carbon dictatorship. That means we have to do what they say if we allow it to come to that. But I'm very excited to see people moving forward in the movement, supporting our efforts in what we believe is the only and most critical time. So, OK, can you maybe in a moment we can talk about what we can do as activists to support you? And maybe that's just financial or I'm sure you've got other ideas. But what I was very interested in and Patrick, feel free to chime in here as well. Um, you said that you were beginning to get an ear from, and I know Jolie Diane has been doing fabulous work over there in Washington, D.C., to get our Congress people and our senators at least listening to this conversation. Can you speak a little bit about how you think people are receiving you, both in the U.S. Um, House of Representatives, as well as other, other ears that you might have spoken into while you were in Istanbul or anywhere else? I would like to talk really quickly because I want, but I want to hear Patrick as well. But yes, Jolie has been, we started an, it, we started an initiative on the Coalition Against Geoengineering uh, website. Jolie went to our legislators and for 15 years we have had geoengineering activists going into the offices saying, you know, will you address geoengineering? And essentially our legislator said, yeah, you know, we'd love to address it. It's not happening. See you later. They had no interest. Mm -hmm. In this, Jolie went in with the plan that we spoke about and designed, and she spoke about how geoengineering relates to the Paris Climate Agreement. And she said geoengineering is creating the climate change. We have proof of this. We're planning on moving forward. However, what it's planned to do is circumvent our Constitution, state law, create a new government. And that's essentially what happened the other day when this passed. And she said – are you interested in representing your constituents? Because if you allow this to go through, you're going to lose power and your ability to represent your constituents. And according to her, the representative said, wait a minute, what? Tell, wait, mm -hmm. get back. Tell me more about this issue of geoengineering and how we can reclaim our power back. So they're very interested. So for the first time, and I think Joe Lee would probably uh, be an asset to have on the program, for the first time, Joe Lee's call to action 
was affected. Uh, the legislators were asking us, tell us more about this. What can we do? So we're seeing a huge cohesiveness. You can go to a coalition against geoengineering. Uh, .org, go into news and you will see uh, a call to action in one of the top articles and Thank you can you. get more details about that. But I Great. thought it was important to share. I really want to hear from Patrick. <coughs> My apologies for. for no, no, no. no, no, no. Fine. Hey, I just wanted to underline that, guys. So it's Coalition Against Geoengineering. Go under news and find out about Jolie Diane's work to engage our Congress and how you can support that by calling your Congress. And I'm speaking to myself, too, because I haven't done it yet either. I know that we're all so busy. Patrick, please um, go ahead and weigh in on, on any of the above. Okay, so going back a little bit to the, the COP21 thing, as they were discussing a, at the very opening uh, speech at the Paris Climate Conference, they, are, they want to bring a uh, two-degree Celsius budget to the entire globe. And they're going to calculate that out in, in terms of carbon. So each country will have a carbon allowance, and that's going to filter down to individuals having a carbon allowance. Mm -hmm. And so you could get to the point where, you know, you say you want to have a child, and you apply to get a license <laughs> to have a child, oh, and they'll no. say, well, we'd love to, but you're, you're uh, overdrawn on your carbon allowance. Sorry, we've got to, we can't, we, we can't un, un, undo your temporary sterilization. It yeah. really is that creepy. These guys, I mean, you have to, there's a book everyone should read called Technocracy Rising by Patrick Wood. This is a very, very old plan. It goes back to the 30s or even, I mean, or even further. And they want to bring in this carbon dictatorship. And they were talking about, uh, Transform the economy to energy credits back in the 1930s. This is very, mm. very old. Wow. Um, oh yeah. And, and actually on my, uh, on my, I have this website called stopspraying-us-sf.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. When, if you go there, there's an article called Selling Chemtrails, which explains the whole, uh, technocracy thing and why, um, glo the belief in global warming is central to global governance. Because uh, they, they don't call it government, they call it governance and, uh, and geoengineering. But um, the same, I just call them the scumbags, the people who are behind all these global movements and so on. Mm -hmm. um, they, the, one of their groups is called the Club of Rome. Mm -hmm. And the Club of Rome wrote in 1991... Uh, after the fall of the uh, Soviet Union, they, need, they needed a new enemy to unite the population behind mm -hmm. behind them to, to, right. to, to walk them into global governance. Mm -hmm. um, and they said they they thought that uh, the threat of pollution, famine, drought, global warming, and the like mm -hmm. would fit the bill. Right. Right. So one year after that, you get the uh, the Rio conference and Agenda 21, and they're banging the drum for, you know, about global warming and the old Al Gore's dog and pony show, all right. that sort of stuff right. for years. Um, but unfortunately for them, the sun went into a cooling cycle <laughs> back in the late 90s, mm -hmm. and the head of the IPCC, uh, Pachari, and the UK Met Office said, you know, actually global warming stopped in the late 90s, and it's nearly 20 years now. Mm -hmm. But if so you read is, uh, so the rest of that thing, it wasn't just global warming, famine, drought, and right, the like right. would fit the bill. So you can generate famines and droughts and the like with geoengineering. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. I mean, they have to keep doing it mm -hmm. to sell us this lie that we all need to, like, limit our carbon pollution, which is, you know, plant food. Right, right, right. So, so anyway, so it, that's one it thing. Does seem that um, Michael is the one, you know, and, and his group are the ones that will get the seminal piece of evidence that's needed to prove that it is, in fact, going on. Because once we prove that, the whole house of cards falls. Well, I, my opinion is I think the way we beat this thing is through mass awareness. And not masses in groups, but like just individuals talking to other people at the you know, on the bus or in, in the supermarket or wherever, because G, uh, GMO food, 
when that was first introduced, um, the few people who were saying, you know, that I think there's, we're not entirely sure how safe this is. They were ridiculed and called conspiracy theorists. So no, yeah, don't, don't, don't worry about that. Here, here's a nice scientist. They'll tell you how awesome it is. But over time, enough people talked to one another that there was a mass opposition to it, and there were ballot initiatives. There were, but uh, but now. Uh, Business has responded by, like, uh, they, they can sell non-GMO food for more. So there's the, it's, uh, so what we need is that level of awareness and opposition to the spraying. And I think until then, it's, uh, legislative, um, legal, um, petitions, writing to Congress people and so on, it is going to be, it is, it's, it, it, I'm not sure how much it will achieve because it's a covert program. No matter who you talk to, they will say, no, it's a vapor trail. Shut up. You're a conspiracy theorist. So that's the problem. You know, I I do believe, of course, that we need to tell everybody and, you know, we need to get out there in the way that some fabulous activists across this country are doing, you being one of them. But it does seem, though, that because there's this plausible deniability, no, it's not happening. You get to, you know, point Z you know, in your in your congressional office, and what you hear is, no, it's not happening. So it does yes. seem that where Mike, Michael, go ahead. Well, I agree that education is the key. However, we've woken up, you know, 100 million people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when I started the film, I, I got into it and I said, the, the movement doesn't need another film. I said, because we've woken up a lot of people. And don't get me wrong, waking up and the activism, it's key to the work that we're doing. Yes. Yes. But it's not going to do it. And the example would be, let's say if your home is burning, you know, should you get on Facebook and tell all of your Facebook friends and somehow think that fire is going to go out? No, you have to take the right steps and the right action to get that out. And that's where we're at right now. The house exactly. is on fire. But telling people is, is great. It's very much important. Just yep. like, you know, telling the fire department your house is burning. That's mm-hmm. without question. The first step. Exactly. And then when they come over, you start working with them. Hey, the fire is on the second floor. It's in this room. They go into that room. They put the, the water on it. That's where we're at. We're literally in a legal and legislative crisis. And again, this will, if we don't stop it, it will create the framework to legalize geoengineering. And a lot of people say, well, why is that? That's not important. They're already doing it. Yes, they are, are already doing it illegally. And because of that, we have the ability to develop allies to go into court to start suing. We have the ability, because there are losses and damages beyond belief, there there are debts associated with this. We have legal uh, cause to go into court and to start prosecuting doing these types of things. Once it's legalized, and especially in a court outside of America, in this newly formed government, it will remove our ability to take both legal and legislative action. So people are waking up. So it's very important that they uh, create this this structure and then legalize this outside of the court systems. And what we have to look at is what's happening with the TPP uh, and other uh, trade agreements. These agreements are being formed uh, where they have global tribunals. And these global tribunals are essentially the court system. They're driven by the courts and they protect uh, this, this system from, from, from getting sued. And what they have the ability to do, because we're working on the Maui Clean Sky Ordinance, which was a local county Maui County Ordinance, they have the ability to sue local municipalities if they interfere with the profitability of these corporations. Mm -hmm. So again, telling people what's in the sky, yes, very important. We never want to take away from the efforts of people that specialize Mm -hmm. in that. But again, using that knowledge, using that knowledge for effective work in stopping this. And today, our battle is definitely uh, legislative and legal. And if we miss the boat on this, Okay. If we only hand out flyers, if we mm-hmm. only do that and allow this structure to be built, it's going to be outside of our reach. Right. And they're so, going to be the ones announcing to the world why we're seeing trails exactly. in our sky. Exactly. They're going to say, so, look what we're doing, and you can't do anything. Right. So can you speak about and maybe break it down? I don't know if this is going to upset the what you've got going for the movie, but could you break it down what the seminal, central part of this of this program that you're hoping to – operate where we get the definitive evidence that it is in fact happening 
Uh, how it can I know that you're going to be we talked about the aerial samples, but for our listeners, you could repeat that. But what I'd like to break down though is this special time that we're in and the special work that you're doing, and I want to know how we can support you. So. Um, please, Michael, and also Patrick. Uh, but Michael, why don't you get, just if you could speak about that a bit? Yeah. Well, the key of this movement or this new film is is it's a call to action film. So it's it's uh, based on alerting people, covering everything that we covered in the the first two films, but utilizing the resources that come in. We have designed an aerosol collection campaign. And what this is, it's a project where we go up in airplanes and we test the aerosols. Um, why is this important? Well, we have rain tests from around the world. They all contain the primary ingredients uh, named in a, a number of geoengineering models and also patents. Mm-hmm. Um, so for us, you know, and along with the thousand other dots that connect, mm-hmm. that's proof. However, when you get into the court of law, um, there's this thing called reasonable doubt. So mm-hmm. rain tests are not, because there are so many other mm-hmm. contamination issues, mm-hmm. they are not going to conclusively prove that mm-hmm. the trails are causing that. Going up into the trails is the first time that anyone's done this, but it's the, it's the key component in bringing legal and legislative okay. action. So, so what do you need to make that happen? What do you uh, need to make that happen? Each, each flight uh, is going to cost for gas and, and other resources. Approximately, right now, if we do this ourselves, I'm talking to some companies uh, that might be involved with this as well, about $10,000 per flight. And what we're looking to do is start the spark to expand these programs into regions around this world. And the reason for that, what we want to do is show that these programs, which they are, are occurring in every region. And in, in, as a result, our objectives are to get this into courtrooms around the world. And a lot of people said, hey, the courtroom is, is bought and paid for. You're never going to get anywhere. Maybe that's true in certain regions. But as we spoke about, the winners and the losers, there are certain regions right now that are losing as a result of geoengineering. People are dying. Droughts are getting uh, – droughts are being caused, destroying their food supply. You know, we look at the climate change agenda, other people who have interest and in certain products or commodities which are going to be removed through this transfer of power. So there are a lot of people now who have a definite interest in, uh, in, in the approach that we're taking. And that's very important. And again, the key, uh, we don't argue whether the planet's warming or cooling. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we do say is you cannot prove that the planet's warming or cooling. Right. And that's absolute truth, uh, while we have geoengineering programs ongoing. So okay. what we're saying is stop the programs, halt all climate talks, uh, mandates, legislation, uh, until our skies are, uh, don't have any more geoengineering particulates in it. Then we can come back to the table. We'll okay. see what the planet's doing. So I think it's, it's again, the most effective way to stop these. Um, get involved with the project. And to learn how you can participate, go to uh, www.unconventionalgray.com. We need support um, to get airplanes in, in the sky. So we're going to do the work, but uh, we definitely need people to support this project because right now we have everything uh, that we need uh, to uh, to do to get the airplanes mm-hmm. off of the air, but we need <clears throat> gas money. You know, it's kind right. of like we're hitchhiking, so we need gas money at this time. And so where are you with that? Can, can you speak about the financial needs and if you have a, an active place people can go and donate so we can get this thing rolling? Yes, yes, we do. Right now we're running on fumes for this production, so I have an incredible team uh, right now, but we definitely need funding to get the airplane in the sky. So at the very least, to get one flight off the ground, we need about $10,000. So you can participate by going to uh, to the website for the film, which is www.unconventionalgray, that's G-R-E-Y, uh, dot com. And again, this is uh, very critical for us to work together. So th- thank you so much, Kate, for, for asking that. Well, it does seem if that's if that's what the the whole program is going to hinge on is the results of the testing that you'll be doing via the planes. And also, I know that Marvin Herndon spoke about um, having, you know, skydivers or or some outrageously uh, fantastic idea like that. Um, although hopefully that's plausible too. But um, but if that's the the, the central. Um, pin of this whole thing, then we need to get those planes up into the sky. And it's, it's the key to the film. Yeah. Again, my goal is not to reach more people with information, although I encourage those who are yes. 
However, yes. it's key to what we're trying to accomplish. We have very concise objectives. Um, and again, this is a project that will work because we can prove in a court of law that geoengineering is without question happening and creating climate change. Right. And because this is not arguable, it's left out of climate models. The climate models are flawed and fraudulent. You can't move forward taxing people, taking away their rights, fining them, moving forward with all of this. Exactly. And that's just simple ABC law. You know, it's a, this is not a difficult thing to comprehend. However, you know, the tests that we use, and especially that uh, Marvin Herndon is going to be overseeing this. He's a world-renowned scientist, and he's uh, planning on writing a peer-reviewed paper. So with that, a peer-reviewed paper is court admissible. And uh, so the objectives go along. We're still learning about this and about all of the ins and outs. But right now, I feel like at least my calling, my part in the play right now, I've woken up enough people. I'm not interested in so much getting the masses behind us, although it's okay if they do. What what we need are tests. What we need right. are good attorneys and good and courts what? who if will represent us. If you run a great fundraising campaign, I mean, if Patrick Roddy can, can raise the money to fly to Turkey in one day, then it seems like, if people understand exactly what's at stake and how this is the key to changing our world, which I do believe it is, then it seems that we need to get that money flowing in, you know. And um, so I'm hoping that, that that's as front and center in your eyes as it seems to be in mine if I'm if I'm. It's really Listen, thing. We, we, we have an all-star team. We have pilots. Yeah. We have airplanes. Mm -hmm. We have attorneys. We are ready to go. We have to get airplanes up. And, okay. And, you know, part of me, if I had the resources, if, if mm -hmm. I had that money in the bank, mm -hmm. we would, we would be doing this. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, if people think because the, the film's got a lot of exposure, I have a lot of money and that could be the furthest thing from the truth. Oh, absolutely. Both of my films were for free. Mm -hmm. So free films that are mm -hmm. available for yeah. free typically don't yield the type of return that a normal film uh, right. would have. Right. So that's the thing that we need. Okay. Um, and again, it's just a small uh, participation by people who are in the movement who can who can make this a reality. And okay. we have to work so together let's, beyond information. Let's put it out there, everybody. Everybody listening to this, um, please give what you can to uh, Michael Murphy's campaign to get airplanes in the sky that can do the testing that needs to be done to be brought into a court of law and challenge the very prison that is coming down upon us. At the same time, Patrick, would love to hear from you as far as the work that you're doing uh, to, to alert everybody to what is going on in the skies all over the world. Anything that you want to say about your, your work, you know, together with Michael and also what you've been doing with Stop Spraying Us SF. Um, I, I, I don't update Stop Spraying Us SF enough, but it's a good source of data and so on. I'm mostly active on... It looked on great. I just went to it and it looked wonderful. So please, please consider updating. I, 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 need, I need to do more. You've got uh, to. I, I, I'm, I'm more active on uh, Facebook. In the last month or so, I've been posting uh, satellite imagery from around the world, from NASA, uh, they have it's uh, earthdata.nasa.gov. Anyone can go there. It's and just, give us that again, would you? Because I, I think that's sorry. important information. Yeah, earthdata.nasa.gov, and I think it's called Worldview. Maybe if you just look at NASA satellite in Google. You'll, you'll find it. Okay, earthdata.nasa.gov, and it was yeah. it Worldview you said? I think it's Worldview. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So I just I just uh, take screenshots of like the different I, you know they like crime scene photos from all over the world and I've been posting them. I also do uh, time lapses every day in San Francisco, and um, I, I feel I feel we have enough evidence right now to, to move forward because my rainwater analysis comes back really high in aluminum and barium, and I am right beside. 7,000 miles of clear ocean, so that I, we should have pristine air. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's full of metals. And you can see it. I mean, it's, um, I'm not sure exactly uh, what would be considered court admissible. And, you know, the, then you, you're going to come up against, oh, yeah, do you have standing? There's all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. I still think we need more people. Like, we, I live in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and uh, when the uh, the baseball team here won two World Series, and when they won, like the streets 
filled up with like I mean, like the, the entire city came out. Where they were all unified, and like, yay, our local team won. Mm-hmm. But yet, if I do a protest or or I call them educational outreach, you know, I'm lucky to get a dozen people to show. <laughs> we don't have the numbers yet. We, I mean, it's good that there are determined people just pushing and pushing and pushing. Mm-hmm. But until we have a mass force like we had with the GMOs or whatever, um, I, I think it's going to be really hard because. The, the courts will – it's a covert program. The courts will um, – courts and legislative, legislative people will try and shut you down left and right, And uh, which isn't to say we shouldn't try those avenues. We should be holding politicians' feet to, feet, feet to the fire, uh, unelected officials, all these kind of things, letters to the editor, all those sort of things. But I think the key is um, go – First, research it. Find out what this is about. Do your own research so you're comfortable explaining at least part of it to people. And then just start talking to people. And at, at, at first, you'll feel a little, a little cautious because any time you uh, bring this up online, you will get attacked by these armies of trolls and disinfo folk. And you should, but you need to know that is a very unrepresentative of the world at large. Mm-hmm. Um, Patrick, I'm wondering something. Yeah. Your photographs, the ones that you draw down from NASA, yeah. where you get um, earthdata.nasa.gov, yeah. these are aerial photographs. They are so compelling. I'm hoping that you might be able to put them under your website because people listening to this, I'm wondering if those photographs can be used also to distribute to others and say, look what's going on over this country. Look what's going on daily over that country. So that, we, you know, your, your photographs can be evidence in, in and of themselves, different kind of evidence than Michael's grabbing for. But what do you think about that? So that people well, have nowhere to go. To there, are, there are my, – my, fa- my Facebook timeline is open to anybody who has a Facebook account. I don't, I, no, nothing is hidden at all. Okay. So uh, that's the easiest way. Plus, I update okay. that most regularly. I okay. mean, at, at some point, yes, I'll do that. But, I mean, yeah. how do you pick the best ones? Because they're just... They're it, all it, so it, good, you know, it's, or so bad. It's just so egregious. Yeah. Like a couple of days ago, or, uh, or was it, fr- I think Friday, the entire Pacific was absolutely trashed. It looked like it was freaking Venus or something. It was just so... I mean, and, and then, you know, the following week, there'll be something even worse. So, you know. Hey, I do I do have uh, two things I want to mention before. I know that we're, sure. you know, the end of the show kind of comes upon us. The music goes on and I'm like, oh, OK, well, I want to <laughs> mention two things. Uh, one is on January 13th, a group of really dedicated activists led by a woman up in the um, the Grass Valley area named Lisa Thomas has put together the California for Na- for natural skies which is going to be an event january 13th on the steps of the capitol from 10 to 3 michael murphy and patrick roddy will both be there speaking i will be there doing a little singing there will be bands um there will be groups (laughs) oh dear (laughs) is it happening is it it happening it went so so much quickly yes i know Thank I know. you, and I can't wait to. It's co- Kate, we hope that you come and show up at this event. Patrick and I are certainly going to be here, so I, we need we but, need but, you there. Okay, I'll be there. Good night, you guys. Good night. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Speak the truth.